If you're an early riser, get ready for a treat in the morning sky. Just before sunrise, look toward the eastern horizon. You'll witness a spectacular alignment of six planets stretching across the sky. Four of these, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus, will be visible to the naked eye. The other two, Uranus and Neptune, will need binoculars or a telescope to spot. This is the second major planetary alignment of the year. You might remember the grand planetary alignment that lit up our evening skies a few months ago. This time, the alignment is happening in the pre-dawn sky, so you'll need to wake up early to catch it. There's one more difference. Mars isn't part of this lineup. That's because it's currently shining in the opposite direction, visible in the western sky shortly after sunset. But that's not all. The skies over the next few weeks will be full of wonder. Two more celestial events are coming up, both visible to the naked eye and guaranteed to make you pause and look up. In this video, I'll walk you through all three events, the key dates to watch, and what you can expect to see. So if you love watching the sky, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a space update. The first event, part of the planetary alignment itself, is the stunning close conjunction of Jupiter and Venus. In astronomy, a conjunction happens when two celestial objects appear very close together in the sky from our point of view on Earth. These alignments are not only beautiful to watch, but also quite rare, especially when they involve planets. One of the most famous examples is the Great Conjunction, where Jupiter and Saturn appear unusually close to each other about once every 20 years. The last one made headlines in December 2020, when the two gas giants aligned on the day of the winter solstice, creating a dazzling sight. But while the Jupiter-Saturn pairing is a long-awaited event, the conjunction of Jupiter and Venus holds its own unique charm for two main reasons. First, Venus and Jupiter are the two brightest planets in our sky. Venus outshines them all and is often called the morning star or evening star. Jupiter usually comes in second, though Mars can briefly outshine it when it's closest to Earth during opposition. When Venus and Jupiter appear side by side, they form a brilliant double star, visible even from light-polluted cities, with no telescope needed. Second, this conjunction is more frequent than the Great Conjunction. That's because Venus, being an inner planet, always stays near the Sun in the sky. It either rises shortly before sunrise or sets just after sunset. Jupiter, on the other hand, is an outer planet and moves more slowly across the sky. Thanks to Earth's own orbit around the Sun, Jupiter seems to loop across the sky each year, and during this motion, it typically catches up with Venus once annually, leading to a Jupiter-Venus conjunction nearly every year. This year, the conjunction takes place on the morning of August 12th. Look toward the eastern horizon before sunrise, and you'll see Venus and Jupiter glowing side by side separated by less than a degree. Venus will be the brighter of the two, but together they'll look like a brilliant double star in the dawn sky, a breathtaking moment you won't want to miss. If you start watching the eastern sky in the days leading up to August 12th, you'll notice something fascinating each morning. Venus and Jupiter will appear closer to each other. This is because their angular separation the apparent distance between them in the sky is shrinking day by day. In the beginning, Venus will appear slightly above Jupiter, but as the days go by, the two planets will draw nearer until they are side by side on the morning of August 12th, forming a dazzling pair. After this brief cosmic encounter, their paths will start to diverge. Venus will continue sinking lower toward the horizon each morning gradually getting lost in the sun's glare. Meanwhile, 
Jupiter will climb higher and the gap between the two will begin to grow again. But here's the exciting part. While the Venus-Jupiter conjunction takes place in the early hours of August 12th, that same night, just a few hours after midnight, the sky will treat you to another spectacular event. So, if you're planning to wake up early, you might as well stay up all night because the Perseid meteor shower will reach its peak activity. The Perseids are one of the most beloved and reliable meteor showers of the year. They're active every summer from mid-July to late August, but they shine brightest around August 12th when Earth moves through the densest part of the debris stream left by Comet Swift-Tuttle. Under ideal conditions, away from city lights and under a moonless sky, the Perseids can produce up to 120 meteors per hour. These shooting stars are fast, bright, and often leave long glowing trails. Some even explode in bursts of light, known as fireballs. This year, however, there's a small catch. The sky will still be fairly bright on the night of August 12th. That moonlight will wash out the faintest meteors. But don't worry, you can still see dozens of the bright ones, especially if you're in a rural area or anywhere with minimal light pollution. The best time to watch? Between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. local time, when the shower's radiant, the point in the constellation Perseus, where the meteors appear to come from, is high overhead. And the best part? You don't need any equipment. No telescope, no binoculars, just your eyes. Find a dark, open spot, lie back and look up. Give your eyes about 30 minutes to adjust to the darkness and then just enjoy the show. If the weather's good, you might see a meteor every minute. As we move into the second half of August, the planetary parade becomes even more complete. By August 15th, Mercury will rise higher above the horizon, officially joining the alignment and bringing the total to six planets visible in the same stretch of sky. From bottom to top, the order will be Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Uranus, Saturn, and Neptune. Spotting Mercury, however, won't be easy, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, where daylight arrives earlier during summer. This tiny, fast-moving planet always stays close to the sun, so your best chance is to look just before sunrise, with a clear view of the eastern horizon. In contrast, observers in the southern hemisphere are in luck. It's winter there, which means longer nights and later sunrises, perfect for catching a glimpse of Mercury in the pre-dawn twilight. Just above Mercury will be Venus, still the brightest planet in the sky shining like a beacon in the east. Next comes Jupiter, climbing higher each day. It's just re-emerging from behind the sun, and its brightness is steadily increasing. In the coming months, Jupiter will shift into the evening sky, becoming a prime target for stargazers. Uranus lies not far from the famous M45 star cluster in the constellation Taurus. You'll need binoculars or a small telescope to see it clearly, but it's there, adding to the lineup. Further up, toward the southern sky is Saturn, the first of all the planets to rise. It's already quite bright and growing more prominent each night as it approaches opposition in September, the time when it's closest to Earth and at its brightest for the year. Nearby is Neptune, the most distant planet in the solar system. It's close to Saturn in the sky, but far too faint to see without a telescope. So by mid-August, if you're under dark skies with a clear eastern horizon, you'll be looking at a six-planet parade stretching across the morning sky. While August brings a spectacular lineup of planets and meteors, September is shaping up to be just as thrilling for sky watchers. The month kicks off with a record-breaking total lunar eclipse, one of the most widely visible in human history. On the night of the eclipse, over 7 billion people, that's roughly 88% of the world's population, will have a chance to see it. The entire eclipse will unfold over 5 hours and 27 minutes, from the first faint shadow of Earth to the full eclipse and back again. 
totality. When the moon turns a deep red, will last an impressive 82 minutes. This blood moon will fully be visible from much of the world. Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and parts of the Western and Central Pacific. In these regions, viewers will see the full progression, from the subtle shading of the penumbra to the deep red glow of totality, and then the moon's gradual return to brightness. Unfortunately, if you're in North or South America, you'll miss out this time. The moon will remain below the horizon during the eclipse. But that's not the end. Two weeks later, a partial solar eclipse will sweep across parts of Oceania and Antarctica. It will be the last eclipse of the year, so if you're in the path, mark your calendars. And on that same day, something else exciting happens. Saturn reaches opposition. That means Earth is directly between Saturn and the Sun, bringing the ringed planet closest to us and at its brightest in the sky. If you ever wanted to photograph Saturn, this will be your best chance all year. So September promises incredible views, a blood moon, a solar eclipse, and Saturn at its best. We'll be covering all these events in detail in upcoming videos, so don't forget to subscribe to stay updated. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out our latest episode, where we reveal the first images captured by the largest digital camera ever built for astronomy. These stunning photos give us a whole new perspective on the universe. You don't want to miss it.